Hey, I'm Austin Sanders. I'm a Mercer University graduate, graduated in December. Uh, I'm gonna be marching tomorrow to get my diploma on May 13th. May 13th, gonna get my diploma then, or degree, whatever it's called. Uh, I'm a media studies major. I'm currently pursuing my graduate degree in organizational leadership. As a high school student, I didn't really know exactly what to expect. I knew that a lot of guys that came before me in football, they got college, they got college scholarships uh, for athletics, for football, and that just seemed like the way to go. Didn't really know what I was gonna do after that, but that didn't really matter. I just was like, yo, I need this scholarly right fast. That, that's exactly what I need because that's what I could tell people, hey, you know, I'm a D1 athlete, you know, that, that's a whole bunch of bragging rights and all that type of stuff. You, you really want that stuff for, um, when you're young like that, you want it for the accolade of it. You want it to be able to say, you know, I earned this, this is how, this, you know, someone asks you how good you are at football, this is how good you are at football. You know, somebody wants to, somebody wants to finance your education for you to play. Didn't really know what I was going to major in, but I just knew that I wanted to go to, I, I wanted to go to college and play football. And my dad had, he had never played football or many organized sports like that. And he was telling me a lot of stuff. And I was like, man, man, this, this guy don't know what he's talking about. You know, he would tell me, we had a recruiting co coordinator that would, we basically, we basically depended on him to do everything for us. And my dad would say, well, why are you doing that? Why don't, you, why don't you do it yourself? And I was like, you know, dad, you don't know how this works. All right, that, that's, not how the, that's not how the game works. Looking back, he was right. He was right. You were right. But um, I got my I got my scholarship. I think about three days before National Signing Day. National Signing Day is is the day where everybody signs in the nation, pretty much uh, in, in high school. All the seniors like, like they sign a letter of intent to go to school. And I got my I got my offer like three days right before, and I was really nervous. I didn't know where I was going. I was like, man, honestly, I'm. I've been a stubborn person. I was stubborn back then. I'm still kind of stubborn now. I just know a little bit more. But back then, I was like, man, I'm too good at football to, to have to apply to college. You know, somebody should be offering me because I'm, I'm out here playing, playing my heart out. I'm doing a bunch of guys doing. I was beating a lot of guys that had offers at the time, like in one-on-one -on -one matchups during the games. So I thought, you know, this is how it's supposed to work. I, I beat them. I get offers, but it wasn't working like that. So I was a little nervous, but I did get my offer about three days before National Signing Day, which was like February 4th, February 1st, or something like that. And I got that scholarship to Mississippi Valley State. Uh, it was it was a trip. I did a lot of growing during that year. A lot of hardship that uh, I think it fortified me into the person that I am now. And then I got a second, my second scholarship at Mercy University. Once I, dis once I knew for a fact that I was not returning to Mississippi Valley State. I knew I couldn't go, and I said, you know, no matter what happens next year, I won't be here. Whether I have to go work, whether I have to, I didn't, I really didn't want to enlist to the military. But I was like, man, I do trade school. I didn't know exactly what trade school was. Looking back on it, that might have been a good idea, actually. But yeah, I was in the past. Um, I, I sat down at my computer, and I just, I looked up, I Googled uh, the NCAA conferences for football. And I think, you know, I, I emailed everybody. I emailed every school, basically D1 and half of the D2 people. And I basically, I think I sent about 200, between 200 and 300 emails. And I emailed the head coach of every school if their email was available, the offensive coordinators of every school, and the O-line coaches of every school. And, you know, I, after that, uh, I talked to a bunch of teams. I was talking to, I was talking to the coaches like every day. And, Mercer, Mercer, uh, I want to get back to Georgia. Mercer was the first Georgia school to give me a concrete offer, so I signed with them. So when I got to Mercer, like when I actually got on the campus, I came, I visited for the first time during the spring break. And the first thing I told every coach that I was talking to on the phone was, they said, well, what are you looking for in a school? What, will, what, do you, what would make you sign? And I said, well, first coach, I can't starve on your campus. Because I was starving at the other place. I was like, yo, I cannot be hungry on your campus. Oh, I, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave, and I can't pay for school. Mercer provided me with both of those things. I got to the campus, and they showed me all the eateries and all that stuff. And I said, oh, I said, okay. I think they had like a Chick-fil-A, they had a, uh, a little Subway, they had a New Way Sub, uh, a few little restaurants. I said, okay, I got some options, all right. So now, you know, hunger's over here, I'm over here. You know, hunger ain't on my back right now. 
which is which is good. I was very happy to see that. And then we started we started playing, and I was real nervous to come in and play because I, as far as I was concerned, I hadn't seen real D1 talent because I just didn't consider what I had been doing real D1 talent. So I got here, and I man practices where they seemed like they were in the right amount of time. They, they weren't going over the, the, the legal amount of time. They were doing things by the book. And um, I got here and I was balling my ass off, man. And I was, just, I, was, I was genuinely enjoying practice. Like I wake up in the morning, I wasn't, I wasn't really even that tired. I was ready to go throw some bodies around. I was ready to go put my hands on some people real aggressively. And I was, th I think one time during camp, during fall camp, I remember we, had, we, was, in the, we was in the practice. And it was a regular day. And the coach, he said, he came up, he said, hey, I got a surprise for everybody. You know, I'm like, a surprise? Are we finna run or something? And he said, we got, we got smoothies for everybody. Man, I, 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 think, I think a tear came out of my eye. I think I, I, think I shared a little tear. I was like, yo, I think I, I, think I made it, man. I, <laughs> this is how it's supposed to be. I play offensive line, and specifically, I play offensive tackle and guard. I could do both. But for Mercer, I have been playing offensive tackle for the entire time. Uh, I play both sides, left, right, left tackle and right tackle. Um, I can play both left guard and right guard. Um, when I got here, honestly, throughout life, I felt like a lot of people have, have wanted more for me than I wanted for myself for most of the, most of the time, basically, uh, just from school to sports. And people usually want me to be more of a leader. Now me myself, I you know I like to just do my job and get out of there. I like to just you know do my job, kind of you know say a few things if I feel like saying a few things, and slide because I don't want to be no babysitter. But um, when you're good, or when I think I have a presence about me, I think I think uh, I'm, kinda, I'm pretty charismatic. I'm a pretty charismatic individual, and that's why a lot of people have like coaches and role models like you know just people, just superiors I guess have wanted me to be more of a leader. And I, my idea of a leader was somebody that was going like, if somebody's messing up, you know, the person that's going like, you know, uh, the person that's going to reprimand them, the person that's going to be yelling at them, saying, man, you need to get right and everything. I never wanted to babysit anybody because people are going to do what they're going to do. I never wanted to be the guy that's out here, you know, yelling at people and begging people to do right. If you're going to do right, you're going to do right. I just wanted to be the person that when someone says, it's Austin doing his job, I don't want anybody to, in the room or anywhere to be able to say, no, he isn't. I just wanted to, I wanted, I wanted to lead by example. And I think as far as leading by example, I think I'm doing a pretty good job of that. I try to carry myself in a way that if other people did it, they get, they, they would be successful in their actions. Well, I got my bachelor's now. This, this is the point that everybody has been waiting for. You know, they're like, oh, you know, you just gotta grind out those four years and you're gonna get that piece of paper and it's gonna be happily ever after. Everything's gonna be wonderful. Um, but you know, I guess I haven't had enough yet because I'm going, I'm going back for a master's. I'm going back for more. But after I get the master's, immediately, uh, pending on this football season, depending on what happens, if I break anything, it's over with. I'm done with football. But if I don't get too banged up or anything like that, I'm going to, I'm going to try to go to the league, either the NFL or the Canadian Football League, the CFL, just because I don't know any other ways I can make a large amount, of, that large of an amount of money in that amount of time, in about a year or two or something like that. Uh, and after that, I know, um, I want to use my master's degree. I don't want to just have a master's degree just to have a master's degree, because I don't really care like that. I want it to, to benefit me some way. And I do think that I would be good uh, in a managerial position or a leadership role because I think I have pretty good qualities of a leader. I think a lot of people listen to me. I don't, I don't talk to anybody as an inferior. I talk to everybody about the same, pretty much. Uh, I think that would make me a pretty good leader. And my first, my first thought of getting into a leadership role was to actually go for uh, Waffle House was at one of our job fairs. And they have a program, it's like a managerial program, where you, you study under a Waffle House manager and then you become a Waffle House manager. And then I think in a year or two, if you do well at that, they put you in charge of two Waffle Houses and then you know another year or two, you get three and you just keep going like that. It's a pretty quick program to get up and then uh, before you know, you can be like a district manager if you, you know, if you're good at it and you'll be making a, a pretty good amount of money. And then from that, I can take that experience because uh, ultimately I would like to own, not exactly a Waffle House, but I would like to own a, a couple franchises, maybe some eateries, some things like that, a car wash. I want to own a few things. There are some things me, uh, some of my friends and I 
would like to try to get into, but you know, everything takes money. That's why I need some capital. But, yeah. College overall, it's definitely been a trip, man. It's, it's definitely been a trip and it, it's, it hasn't been something that I could have predicted in any way because I had never experienced something like this. I feel like I learned, I feel like I'm, I have a pretty good attitude for learning. I feel like I learned pretty well and I feel like I've learned the most outside of class. Uh, I really, I've really seen classes as a formality, really. Um, there have been like two or three classes that I took and I was like, okay, I think I could take some things from this class and apply them to anything outside of this class. Most of the stuff was kind of just, I don't know, it, it, it didn't really benefit me that much, but I feel like the people that I met, people that I met in the cafeteria, people that I met at another college, at a function, things like that, having conversations with them and me seeing their, uh, I, I guess me kind of asking them about their life experience has built onto my life experience. So when I started hanging around more women, that increased my perspective a lot. When I started hanging around guys that never even wanted to play football, guys that never played sports, that increased my perspective a lot because they wanted different things, they came up different ways, and they deal with different problems that I've ever had to deal with. You know, uh, hanging out with guys that aren't black, hanging out with women that aren't black, hanging out with people that just aren't, haven't done any of the same stuff I've done. I feel like that's been the, the richest experience uh, college was a pretty decent time. Um, I liked it. I like who I am now. I really like the person that I am now. And I'm not gonna say it wouldn't have happened without college, but it might have took longer. I feel like it would have took longer because college is like a, um, it's like a super condensed community. So college time is different than regular time. Cause you might meet somebody today and to build a pretty decent relationship with somebody I think would take more than two months. In college, two months of just hanging out with somebody because probably they might live next door or something like that. Or you might have the exact same classes or something. You might really know them in two months. You might know them a lot, especially if you're struggling. People that I met, people that I met my freshman year of college when I was going through it, I feel like I knew them. By the end of that year, I feel like I knew them longer than guys I've known for seven years. Longer than guys I've known for, for quite a while. Just because uh, that condensed space and the struggle itself, I feel like it's like, man, it's like dog years or something. It's a good time though, I like it. I'm glad it's about over with though.